Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 143, 44, 40 something of the Speared Sunnies podcast. Uh, <clears throat> I know this one's uh, late, but I postponed it for a very good reason. Uh, and then uh, it didn't work out. <laughs> so originally, I postponed the podcast because I was like, oh, the episode 150 of the podcast is going to come out soon. The tickets are going to go out soon. So I'll release the podcast when the tickets are on sale, and then all you cunts can go and get it. And I thought tickets would be on sale on Monday. It's now Tuesday, and uh, it's not sorted yet, and it's not going to be sorted till next week. So sorry, postponed it for no fucking reason. But... On the plus side, this means that, uh, is it even, are they even going to be on sale next week? No, they fucking won't. I don't think they're going to be on sale until the 10th. Oh, wait, the 10th is this week. Guys, next episode, uh, the tickets may be on sale. So, I do have all of the information though. So, episode 150 of the Speared Sunnies podcast is going to be recorded in Melbourne uh, on the 16th of Feb- Feb- February. February? February? No one knows how to say that fucking month. Have you noticed that? Everyone says February. Everyone just, <laughs> everyone just mumbles the second half. February. But So anyway, however you say that fucking month, uh, that's when it's going to be. And that's uh, tickets should be on sale by next Sunday, hopefully. Um, but I'll let you know. Um, as always, if you want early access to tickets, uh, become a Patreon supporter. You get 20% off tickets at a certain pledge level. And uh, no matter how much you pledge, you get uh, first grabs of tickets. This one's going to sell out. Uh, because I think the last time I did a show in Melbourne, I sold close to a thousand, uh, and this show is only going to be 150 seats. That's one seat for every episode. I think that by the time I get to episode 300, I might actually be making a reasonable amount of money, but that'll be what, fucking three years from now? So (laughs) we'll see. Um, is that three years? Yeah, three years. Uh, anyway, so that's when it's going to happen. Uh, right now I have the guests... I'm not going to announce them, but it's going to be similar to episode 50. So I liked episode 100 with Josh Wade, but I liked the chaos of episode 50 because there were three guests. I liked that better. I think that was, there was a lot more to bounce off. It was just more chaos. So that's what I'm thinking of doing for episode 150 is I've got, so far I have two special guests locked in and I have a third that I'm very, very excited about that may confirm or may say no. Not too sure, but we'll see. It's going to be fucking awesome. And uh, yeah, if you want early access, Patreon supporters get it first. And then also, as soon as the tickets are on sale, I'll probably chuck it up in the Speared Sunnies Facebook group as well, which you can join for free uh, if there's um, when they're left. But whatever, that's going to fucking happen. Guys, you had a good week, huh? Hope you have, man. I've had a fucking... I've had a very, very productive week, dude. I'm so, I'm so back at it. Gym every day. Done. Easy. Right? Uh, I've done two videos a week for the last two weeks. And this week, I'm going to... Will be my third. I've gone up fucking almost... Um, almost 30,000 subscribers in the last four weeks, which is fucking crazy. The channel's going nuts. Everything's fucking happening. Who would have thought? Putting effort into YouTube pays off, huh? So, uh, I'm very excited, man. It's all good. Oh, dude, I wanted to talk about... I want to talk about this Louis C.K. shit. You heard all about that? Louis C.K. got his fucking dick out. Uh, and then he got in trouble and he took a break for a year and now he's back to doing stand-up and he's in trouble for the jokes that he's telling. And uh, I think that it's fucking bullshit. Uh, firstly, I'd like to say what Louis did uh, was uh, gross and was bad and was not good. And I think that there's a lot There's a lot of people saying, oh, but he asked and it's not that bad. I think the problem with that argument is... Louis himself said that he fucked up and it's all true and it's very bad we did. So I would rather believe what the man who gets his dick out says rather than some fucking cunt on Twitter who doesn't like women that much. (laughs) So I think what Louis did was fucked up. However, I do not think it should destroy his career permanently. I don't think that it was criminal what he did. I think what he did was a fucked up thing to do and a, a bad way to use his influence as one of the biggest comedians in the world when he did it. Uh, But I also don't think he probably realized the influence that he had. Um, And I just think it was a a, a series of very, very bad fuck-ups that shouldn't destroy him, but definitely should 
make him think. And I think that's what's happening. Now, that aside, I think what's happening to Louis is, as a stand-up comedian myself, is a fucked up thing. What's happened is someone has... Louis just started performing again, and uh, he started doing comedy clubs. He's mostly doing surprise sets. Uh, Luke Kidgel, when he went to America, got to see Louis, and I'm so fucking jealous. Uh, Luke said he was really, really funny, and he did really, really well. Um, So what's happened is, obviously, the people that are fucking angry about it have have gone up in arms on Twitter, um, and in response, the comedy clubs that he's performing at... performing at have introduced a policy where if someone gets on stage and you don't like them, you can leave and you'll get a full refund. You'll get your money back. You don't even have to sit through the show. And I imagine that's to discourage people from heckling, people from getting angry, people from feeling ripped off or, 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 you know, going to a club to see someone and then surprise, it's dicks out McGee and everyone goes, oh, that's fucking whatever, right? I think that's great. And, and as a comedian, that's fucking awesome because that means that, you know, if someone heckles or if someone hates you, they can just leave instead instead of heckling, rather. So, that policy's been introduced. Now, Louis has uh, just done, has just come back to stand-up and someone secretly recorded uh, a set of his, an hour-long set, and they leaked it. And essentially what the world has seen is... An hour of unfinished, unpolished material from Louis C.K. And they're fucking angry about it uh, because he's joking about the kids that were in the parkland shooting. He's joking about uh, the younger generation. And uh, basically, the, the joke that he's getting the most in trouble for is the younger generation complaining about shit too much, uh, being entitled, uh, the, the gender pronoun shit, and also... Uh, quite a funny idea, which I think is just basically the premise is just because you've been involved in a school shooting doesn't make you interesting and doesn't mean I should have to listen to you. That doesn't automatically mean you're qualified. That's kind of the premise of the joke, um, which I think has a lot of fucking potential to be very, very funny. But the problem is the whole world has heard both of those jokes when they're not finished. They're not done. And I can, I hear, the as a comedian, I can hear, I'm like, oh, those jokes are both like 70% done. And it's so easy to get to that 70%, especially with, with a dark joke. You can get any joke to 70% done. But when it's a dark joke about something fucked up, that final 30% is, is jumping over all of the hangups that people have. Because obviously, you know, you're joking about a tragedy. You're joking about... Uh, victims and and all that kind of stuff and and very complex social issues, that last 70% is just the most brutal punchlines you can think of. It's only the funny bits. And that last 30% of the joke is wording all of those brutal punchlines and arranging them in a way that can make even the person who disagrees with, with your... disagrees with you the most laugh. That's the, that's that last thirty percent is the hardest part of the joke, and that's what really makes it fucking good. Um, I I had to go through that with my dream world joke. You know, I had all those fucking three or four brutal fucking punchlines, but then that last thirty percent of it in my comedy special was that okay. So I've done these brutal punchlines, but how the fuck can I make people who are sad about the tragedy still? or feel guilty about that tragedy, how can I make those laugh and get them on board and convey that I'm not laughing at the tragedy, I'm just making jokes about it. That was the last 30% of the joke for me. And I don't think Louis has those has those last 30% for either of those two jokes. And I think that he's, get, he's copping a lot of fucking flack for it. And I think it's bullshit. And as a comedian, I think it's fucking absolute bullshit that someone can secretly record material that is not finished yet. There's a reason why Louis is not even announcing that he's doing Louis C.K. shows. So it's not even ready to release as a comedy special. So, uh, sorry, it's not ready to, to release as a comedy special. It's not even close to being released as a Louis C.K. finished tour. The dude is in comedy clubs working on material that's not finished yet and it's being released and it's being judged as if as if 
not only not only is it not being judged as jokes, so even if it was being judged as jokes, and it'd be bullshit because they're not finished, but it's being judged as his fucking opinion, which is even more bullshit because it's not his opinion, it's jokes, and those jokes are not even finished yet, so there's not enough nuance to them. And I love that Louis' main premise is him joking about whiny children online complaining about shit and how do the younger generation respond to that by whining about it online on Twitter and I think it's I don't know I I just don't I just think it's a fucking scary point now to think that as a comedian you can get on stage and this has happened to me where I'm testing out new material and it's you know it's working but it's not fucking finished um, and I've had people start recording me because they think it's really funny, but little do they know the joke that I'm telling, like, here's an example. I'm working on a joke at the moment about, uh, hitting women during sex, right? It's a, it's a scary topic, but it's one that I think is going to be fucking hilarious. And right now I'm at that 70% mark where it's funny, it's funny, it's funny. And then you get to the end and it's too much. And I don't know how to finish the joke. But the only way I can work out how to finish this fucking joke is by doing it again and again on stage and getting to that end point where it's not finished and trying out this, trying out that. Maybe if I said this, maybe if I acted out that, I'm at that fucking point. And let me tell you, if you recorded one of my sets tomorrow that I'm going to do where I'm talking about punching chicks during sex, and if you get to the end of that joke, that joke basically just ends with me describing hitting women. And it's, it's not very funny yet, but I know that it fucking will be. And I know that in my head, even though this joke is 70% done, and it gets laughs all the way up to the end, and then it just starts to offend. I know by the time I tour in November, that joke's going to be fucking awesome, and it's going to be ready for you guys to see, instead of me just subjecting poor strangers who just came to a, <laughs> came to have a drink at a bar to it, right? But I know if some cunt just fucking secretly recorded that, there would just be headlines of like, oh, radio presenter talks about... <laughs> punching women on stage and that'd be it that'd be the end you know what I mean because and I think that that everyone the problem with comedy man and the reason why comedy works is because people don't understand how to do it they don't understand how it works but the problem is all of these fucking idiots complaining about Louis CK and all this kind of shit it's like yeah forget Let's put aside the shit that he's done. People are angry, not at the jokes. They're angry at the man. That's the problem. And all these people are surprised and talking about how Louis C.K. Oh, Louis C.K. is fucking appealing to right-wing people. It's like, no, dude. He was always joking about that shit. One of the last big sets that he did before the controversy was how amazing having sex with children must be if you're a pedophile. And the whole joke was, I, his whole joke was, I love eating chocolate bars, but if someone told me, if you eat a chocolate bar, you're going to go to jail for the rest of your life, I would never eat another one. So, fucking a child for a pedophile, not for me, must be so much better than eating a child. That was kind of the joke. And you know that when he was working out that joke... That definitely wouldn't have fucking worked. Him trying to find the perfect analogy or trying to sympathize with pedophiles using humor. You know that shit, if that was released when he first started working on it, potentially could have ended his career even worse than this getting his dick out scandal. But the point is, everyone saw it when it was finished and everyone at that time was like, this is fucking incredible stand-up. This is, and of course, some people were offended, which is whatever. But most people were like, this is like a masterclass in stand up. You can make me laugh about a pedophile loving to fuck children. That's fucking crazy because it's a horrible thing. <sighs> Sorry, got distracted there. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I think it's, um, I think that th this whole 
conversation shouldn't be whether or not Louis should uh, be able to joke about this kind of shit. It should be whether or not you can secretly record a comedian uh, while they're working on new gear without their knowledge and then sell that to journalists and then pick apart unfinished works. It's literally like kicking down the door of an artist studio and they're being like, oh, look at your half-finished painting. That fucking sucks. Oh, there's no red in it. There's no red in it. You're a fucking shit artist, bro. Stop painting. I mean, it's a little bit different. Maybe if the artist got his dick out for a bunch of female artists, it's a little bit different. But I don't know. I just think as a comedian, it's, it's, not, it's not good knowing that, that your material could just be out there, even when it's unfinished. I don't think that's... Don't record comedians when you go to their shows. Just fucking live in the moment and enjoy it, huh? All right? Um, also, guys, okay, this is fucking very important. Right now, today, it is January 8th, okay? On January 10th, I just got an email. <laughs> and this time, I'm not fucking forgetting it. Not this year, right? On January 10, uh, <clears throat> voting the popular vote category for the Australian Podcast Awards opens. All right. I know we've all set our calendars. I know we've all set our alarms. I know we're all ready to vote every single fucking day. But I also said this last year I forgot to tell you to vote and then I didn't win. Now, this year, we're coming for the popular vote. Okay. Because fuck all the... I've entered in all the other categories as well. Fuck all of them, okay? I don't want judges picking this shit. The only thing that matters is the popular vote category so I can get on stage and disrespect the sponsor with my award speech, all right? That's the fucking plan. The popular vote category opens on the 10th of January. If I win this, I will talk shit about their sponsor <laughs> on stage, okay? I hope they don't listen to this, but it's very important that we all vote so I can get on stage and say thank you so much for this award. I'm really glad to be here. Also, the main sponsor of this event, I wouldn't use it. I don't know who would. Thank you so much. Bye. And then and then that's a whole that's a free trip to Sydney to ruin some sponsors fucking day, all right? So the vo voting opens on January 10. And uh, I will be putting the link in uh, everywhere. I'll put it in my on my Instagram, on Twitter, I'll put it in the Facebook group, everything on the 10th. How does the voting work? I should have looked this up before I started talking about it. Okay. You have until the 14th of February and to get as many votes as you can. Oh, cool. So we have until pretty much the live podcast. So, can you vote every day? Public voting. What are the, vo what are the voting fucking things? Guys, I'll talk about it next episode. The point is January 10th, voting opens. I'm going to be putting the link fucking everywhere. What is that? This Thursday, right? Thursday, the voting opens. I, mean, I need to win this thing because I've entered it two times in a row. you got to pay to fucking enter the thing. It's a giant scam. It's not an actual fucking, oh, you got to pay to enter. Hey, dude, you're just trying to make money out of shithouse podcasts that get 20 plays. But I'll play that game and I'll fucking win it, all right? Popular vote category, we're coming for it. Now, I need to talk about something even more important than Louis C.K. getting his dick out, even more important than the Australian Podcast Awards. I've finally found the only cafe in Australia that is allowed to call their large cups something other than large. As you know, I've, I've set a blanket rule if you have three sizes, it must be small, medium, large. There's too many fucking places out there going small, medium, jumbo, small, medium, extra large, or the worst one, small, large, extra large. No, no, no. Small, medium, large. If you have a fourth option, that can be whatever the fuck you want. It can be the bucket. It can be the big boy. It can be something fucking stupid. The dinosaur, the Godzilla, whatever. If you have four sizes, go nuts on the fourth one, okay? Because that amount of coffee is ridiculous. But if you only have three, it goes small, medium, large, 
or close (laughs) or shut down your business. Or so I thought, right? Recently, my local, they go on on holidays till the end of the month. I don't know why, but whatever. They've closed. So I started going to a new place and they, they have three sizes. They have small, medium, super size. Now, initially when I walked in, I was like, oh, I don't want to fucking say super size. I'm an adult man. I'm not going to fucking say super size. But then I walked in and this cafe is run by Japanese women. All of them really young, all of them gorgeous. And I walked in and they all went, hello, how are you? Welcome. And I love that. I think that's the best shit ever about every Asian restaurant is Asian women going, hello, hello, welcome. It's just the best shit ever. I feel like that's how that's how every every single business should operate. Hello, welcome. You just need like a, a young Japanese woman going and hello, welcome. And it's not even just Japanese chicks. It's like any any Asian girl with an accent just loves going, hello, welcome. It's the fucking best shit ever. That's how everyone should be welcome to every single business. I don't care who it is, right? If you walk into the Rolex store, (laughs) if you walk into the Rolex store to spend 200 grand on a watch, there needs to be like a young Japanese girl earning $3 an hour going, hello, welcome to Rolex, welcome. That's how every fucking store needs to welcome their customers because it makes you feel so fucking welcome. It's the best, right? So I walk in and they're like, hello, welcome. And I was like, all right, all right, all right, okay. This is okay. I'm feeling a bit more welcome, but I still don't want to fucking say supersize. And then I walk up and they go, hello, welcome. What would you like? And I'm like, I would like a supersized cappuccino. And she goes, one supersized cappuccino coming right up. And then she yells down, she goes, one super size. And then the person making it goes, one super size. And then, well, wait over there for your super size. And I was like, okay, this cafe can say it because it sounds fucking awesome when it's coming out of a young Asian woman's, yeah, one super size of cappuccino. It's the best shit ever. And now every time I walk in that place, they remember my order and they go, hello, welcome, one super size cappuccino. And I go, yes, this is the best day ever. Again, I feel like I'm in, I feel like I'm in the fucking Power Rangers cafe, you know? How they all fucking assemble because there's like four Asian chicks there working and they all do a different thing and together they combine their powers to make one supersized cappuccino. Hello, welcome. <laughs> and then I wait and then, then this other chick, for some reason there's one girl and her only job is to hand the coffees to people. Dude, that's one thing that whenever a, a business is run by Asians, there's always one, there's always like six people who don't need to be there but somehow they are. <laughs> you know, like, if, if, dude, every sushi stop shop I've ever been to could be run by two people, but for some reason they have 37. You know, it's like <laughs> they always have like fucking 37 chicks in there going, hello, welcome. And it's like, what are you doing? They're, and they're all doing like one thing. Like no one, no one multitasked. Maybe you don't need to multitask in Japan. Maybe there are that many people in Japan that there's actually enough people for everyone to do only one thing. What's your job? I wash the dishes. Do you dry them? No, no, no. Nakamoto dries them. And you talk to Nakamoto and you're like, what do you do for work? I dry the dishes. I'm like, oh, and then do you put them away? No, 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 no. (laughs) That's what Sakamoto does. And you talk to Sakamoto and he goes, Hello, welcome. I put away the dishes. And you're like, Oh, wow. Do you, <laughs> do you get them out? And he goes, No, 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 no. That's Toshi's job. And then Toshi's getting dishes out. And that's it. There's like already, that's like fucking, what, four people doing the job that one guy can do. And they're all earning like 50 cents every two hours. There are so many people in Japan. You don't need to multitask. <laughs> Every single store you work into, there's 37 chicks doing the job that probably two of them could do. What do you need at a sushi place? You need one person to serve and then maybe one person to get the food out of the counter. You know? And then out the back, you need fucking one cook. 
and then one guy to clean. Maybe. But for some reason, every time I work, I walk into my local sushi joint, there's 37 chicks and they'll go, hello, welcome. And I, it's great. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, what the fuck are they doing? What are they all doing there? Because none of them make the food. It's just 37 people behind the counter just bumping into each other. <laughs> I guess multitasking isn't a thing in Japan. So what I'm trying to say is you're only allowed to have uh, weird coffee cup names if your staff is exclusively young Japanese women who all go, Hello, welcome, one super-sized cappuccino. That's another thing. They don't say cappuccino. For some reason, the, the O gets left out. It's the one super-sized cappuccino. I'm like, fuck yeah. I don't drink cappuccinos anymore. I drink cappuccins. <laughs> you know what, man? I feel like I need to become a Japanese business. That's what I need. You know? Right now, I'm multitasking too much. I write my videos. I film them. And I present them. Nah. What I need is I need Toshi can ride them, all right? And then fucking, I'm running out of Japanese. What's another Japanese name? Mario, because, you know, what, Nintendo's Japanese, isn't it? Mario can film it, and then fucking Luigi can be in it. Hello, welcome to Lu Review. <laughs> no, it'd be Ru Review. All right, now it's getting racist. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on from this. Multitasking doesn't exist in Japan because they have too many people. I'm going to write that down. That's funny as fuck. What else do I want to talk about this week? <laughs> yeah. So I was hanging out with a, with a friend, right? And we were, we were talking about the weather because it's been so fucking hot in Australia. And one of the days was going to be 42 degrees. I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. Figure it out yourself. I'm not converting, okay? 42 degrees. I'm like, oh, it's going to be 42 degrees. And he goes, oh, perfect beach weather. Excuse me? No, it's not. That's fucking heat stroke weather. You don't go to the beach when it's 42 degrees. You will die. That's like the fucking desert. That's not a beach day. That's being stranded. That's dying. That's getting sunstroke. That's not even sunburn. That's sunstroke and skin cancer. That's what that weather is for. 42 degrees, you don't go outside. You sit inside, you put your air conditioner on max, you grab three fans and you fucking destroy the ozone layer. And then you make it sure, you, you use the air conditioner for so long that you make sure next year there's a 43 degree days. That's, that's what you do on a 42 degree day. Dude, if you went to the beach when it's 42 degrees, you'll die. You're not going to make it home. What are you going to do? You're going to sit on the sand and immediately burn. You'll just fucking roast yourself. You'll get in the ocean and it'll be boiling. <laughs> like 42 degrees is literally halfway to boiling point. What is water boil at 100? Okay, it's 42% to boiling. You don't need to go that close to boiling to go to the beach. Go when it's 30. That's hot enough. When it's 42 degrees, that's the kind of weather where you turn on the news and the guy behind the counter is fucking talking about old people dying in their sleep. It's not beach weather. It's your nan died weather. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it's not beach weather. It's, oh, fuck, we got to organize a couple of funerals next week weather. Because if we, if we leave nan in the house, not only is she going to die, but she's also going to fucking roast. And instead of having a funeral, we're going to have a roast dinner. And it won't be cooked by nan. It'll just be nan cooked. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fucking beach weather, dude. It's your grand dies weather. 42 degrees. Let's go to the beach. See ya. I'm not going. I'm going to stay at home. You know what? I think I was in the warehouse when it was 42 degrees. I almost died. That was like being in a fucking oven. And then I think I tried. I was like, oh, I tried to write something. and I ended up melting. And then I just went home and played World of Warcraft like, we, naked. 
Because I don't have an air conditioner in my fucking room. I just have a fan. Dude, the only air conditioner we have is in the... Why is the air conditioner in your house always in the shittest room? You never have an air con in the room that you mostly spend your time in. It's like, oh, we're going to spend fucking $500 on an air conditioner. Where should we put it? Oh, how about under the stairs in the fucking storage closet? Yeah, sounds like a pretty good idea. Oh, why don't, why don't we put it in the fucking... <laughs> why don't we put it in the fucking guest room? Yeah, all right. What's in the guest room? Nothing. The most uncomfortable bed we have. And then three books I've already read. Let's chuck it in there. Oh, where are we going to put the other air conditioner? Oh, I don't know. How about the fucking attic? Oh, I don't know. I was kind of thinking like the living room. What are you, a fucking idiot? We don't put the air conditioner where the people go. We put the air conditioner under the stairs. Where Harry Potter lives. He can be nice and cool. Did you see that Harry Potter shit? Fantastic Beasts. Fantastic Beasts? More like boring and fucking shit. That's what they should rename. The Crimes of Grindelwald? How about the Crimes of J.K. Rowling and her shit tweets? How about that? Remember when J.K. Rowling came out and said Dumbledore was gay? Fine. That's all I will accept after the books because that actually made sense. Dumbledore was gay. Cool. Then they did that fucking play, all right? All right, there's a play. And they cast, like, a, a black actor as Hermione. I don't care about that. That's fine, all right? I don't give a fuck about people changing race. If you're an actor and you can play a character, unless the character or the movie is, like, about being a specific race, I see no problem with it at all. And there was no fucking race politics in Harry Potter. And that was fine! But then all these fucking right-wing retards get all angry. Oh, Hermione has to be white, otherwise it's not good. And that was stupid. I think that's dumb. But then J.K. Rowling, instead of coming out and saying, I think that this chick is a good actor and she'll do a good Hermione, she instead comes out like a fucking moron and goes, yeah, but I never said that Hermione was white. So, and then everyone immediately brings up fucking 36 quotes about Hermione being white. And it's like, bitch, did you even read the book you wrote? But that wasn't the worst one. The worst one was just recently Pottermore, which, by the way, do you guys remember when Pottermore came out? Everyone was so excited to sign up to it. Oh, I can't wait to get into Pottermore and find out what house I'm in. Hey, dude, do a BuzzFeed quiz and then kill yourself. You don't need to be in Pottermore to find out that you're a fucking Hufflepuff. Dude, I bet Hufflepuff has the highest suicide rates of any house. <laughs> you, know, you know it does. You know it does, because Ravenclaws, I bet they're too busy fucking each other. Slytherins are way too busy being big cunts. Gryffindors are off saving the world, and Hufflepuff are just sitting at home depressed and killing themselves. That's what they do. I think Luke's a Hufflepuff. I should check up on him. <laughs> but Pottermore, right? Just, I, Dude, this shit is so fucking dumb, I need to look it up. I want to read it word for word what Pottermore said. What the fuck even is Pottermore? Was that supposed to be a game or is it just a fucking website? I'm going to go on their shit website. Pottermore. I think it's just a clickbait website about Harry Potter and they're pretending that everything they say is canon. <laughs> right. So this is so fucking stupid. It has 20,000 retweets. Hey, if anything has 20,000 retweets on Twitter, it's not good. Have you ever seen a good post that has 20,000 retweets? No. It's either about fucking having sex or like something crazy racist that some person said 10 years ago and it's destroying their career. Pottermore. This is a real thing. Hogwarts did not have bathrooms. Hogwarts did not always have bathrooms. Before adopting... Oh, I fucking clicked off it. Hogwarts did not always have bathrooms. Before adopting muggle plumbing methods in the 18th century, witches and wizards simply relieved themselves wherever they stood and vanished the evidence. 
wizards in a school shit on the floor. Is that trivia? Because it's hashtag National Trivia Day. That's not trivia. That's shitting on the floor. (laughs) Dude, what do they do? Like on the first day of Hogwarts, they take a bunch of fucking 11-year-old children and some ancient 80-year-old wizard is like, Hello, I'm Professor Fingerwarts. Welcome to Hogwarts. Or if you'll excuse me for a moment, 11-year-old children, I'm going to shit on the floor in front of you. And then he just fucking pulls his pants down, gets his rim out in front of 11-year-olds, shits on the floor like a dirty wheat bix for dinner 80-year-old diarrhea poo all over the fucking floor of Hogwarts in front of children. And they all start screaming and crying because some of them, mind you, are from muggle families with toilets, right? Isn't that how that shit worked? Like, all these kids are coming into Hogwarts from a place that has toilets, and then Professor Fingerwart shits on the floor their first day of school in front of them. Well, welcome to Hogwarts! And then he does a dirty diarrhea shit on the floor, and it runs down those mystical stairs, and they keep changing around, so it keeps fucking falling, even though it looks like it's going down the stairs. <laughs> And then what does he get at his wand? And he goes, excuse me, children. I've just shit on the floor. A uh, poopus scoopus. <laughs> and then he cleans up his shit. You're telling me that in the middle of fucking defense against the dark arts, someone does the fucking Avada Kedavra of runny poos, like where they're sitting. They just shit. Like some 15-year-old kid just just shits in the middle of class and the whole room smells like wizard poos. And then Snape gets out his wand and goes, ah, poopus scoopus. Really? You've ruined Harry Potter, dude. It's over. It's destroyed. Wizards used to shit on the floor. And I love that they say relieve themselves. Like it's, oh, they used to relieve. No, they shit on the floor in front of children. Could you imagine? I, look, I failed high school. But do you know how much worse I would have failed high school if my chemistry teacher pulled his pants down and just shit in class? Just fucking shit on the floor. <laughs> You know what's fucked? Even before we invented plumbing, at least we shit in the bush. We didn't poo at school. (laughs) Imagine all those fucking muggle kids who just came from like primary school. They get to Hogwarts. Excuse me, Professor fucking Finger Snatch. Yes? Uh, Can I go to the bathroom? There is no bathroom, Jimmy. You have to shit in front of your classmates and then clean it up with your wand. Oh, but I don't know magic. Well, I guess the room will smell even more like poos until you work on your magic. (laughs) And then what? After like a thousand years of shitting on the floor in front of students, some guy goes, Oi, I reckon we should fucking poo in a... In a bucket, huh? Instead of doing this pooper scooper stuff that gets rid of the poo but doesn't rid us of the smell. <laughs> Hogwarts didn't have bathrooms. Hey. Hey. Harry Potter ended after the last book. Shitting on the floor. That's an offence. Could you imagine parent-teacher interviews? With one of the muggle parents, you know, Professor Stinky Clunge starts talking to Mrs. Thompson, the muggle, about her son. And Stinky Clunge goes, oh, well, you know, Mrs. Thompson, you, your boy's doing very good at, uh, <clears throat> at the, uh, what's a fucking class in Harry Potter? Your son's doing very good in defense against the dark arts, but he could be doing better in 
another class. And then Mrs. Thompson goes, that's nice, Professor Stinky Clunge, but my son says that uh, for the last 365 days you've been pissing on the floor and getting your old wizard dick out in front of 36 children. So here's the FBI. I'm pretty sure that they don't appreciate that either. I would like to see you magic your way out of a Rolf Harris pedophilia court case. And then he goes, no, poopers, scoopers. And his shit disappears. But then he gets locked up in prison and raped by all the inmates because he's a pedophile. Hey, Harry Potter ended after the last book. All right, guys. (laughs) Maybe that's what Louis C.K. should have done after he got his fucking dick out and masturbated in front of all these chicks. Uh, Cummus Disappiro. (laughs) And then he would have been all right. Let's do uh, Miscellaneous Bit at the End, shall we? Miscellaneous Bit at the End, if you don't know, is the uh, part of the podcast, worst part of the podcast, where I answer questions sent in by uh, you guys. If you need any life advice, if you have any revenge stories, uh, send them into podcast at com, and I will answer them if I can make them uh, funny. Or if they suck, I'll ignore them. <clears throat> Okay, so this one I haven't read yet. I haven't read any of these yet. All right, this one's just podcast story and it's two paragraphs, so it might be shit. All right. Hi, Lewis. I will try and explain this as best as possible. So basically, before my ex and I became official, we... (coughs) Sorry. Basically, before my ex and I became official, we were heading home on the train from a night out and saw a couple ahead of us doing cute couple things. At that point, I just asked her if we're a couple and she goes, yeah, I guess we are. So woohoo, we're in an official relationship now. Everything is great and life is okay. Now, while all of this is happening, I really needed to shit like really badly, but I thought it would be a smart idea to hold it in until I get all the way home. Dude, you should have just gone to Hogwarts, shit on the floor and gone, a poop and scoopers. But too bad Muggles invented toilets, huh? I thought it would be a smart idea to hold it in until all the way home. During this time, though, a lot of train stations were under construction for the underpass work, so I had to get off at a station so we could catch a replacement bus to our stop. My ex couldn't be bothered waiting for the bus to come, so she called her dad to come pick us up from the train station, which I thought was a better idea. But I still really needed to shit. So as we were waiting for her dad to come, dude... That would be, you should have just shit in the car with her dad, right? That would be the biggest alpha move. You've just started dating his daughter. He picks you up from a night on the town. And then just to mark your territory, you go, hey, Mrs. Hey, Mr. Girlfriend. And then you just, you just, you just lay down a massive log in the passenger seat of his fucking car. And you leave it there. And you go, I fucked your daughter tonight. And now I'm leaving a big poo in your car and I'm going to fuck her again. You should have done that, man. I really think you would have earned his respect. Dude, if I had a daughter and she took him home and, and the guy just shit in my car, I wouldn't necessarily be happy about him dating my daughter, but I would 100% accept that, you know, because there's no way if I stood between my daughter and a guy who just shit in my car, I would lose that fight. I, I've just got... A hundred percent outfit out. A dude just poos in my car. Over, he wins. You like that's not. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> if I'm a father and and her boyfriend shits in my car, I don't have a daughter anymore. Okay, that's now his daughter. <laughs> it's just that's his now. Right, he's taken it. You know, he's taken over the family tribe. If someone poos in your car. You don't have kids anymore. They have your kids. Oh, where are we? Uh, But I still really needed to shit. So as we were waiting for her dad to come, I'm basically just standing there trying to hold the floodgates or what could have a whole code brown in my pants in front of my new partner who I just asked out 30 minutes before. I asked her a few times impatiently if her dad was close, but she would say, I don't know, real soon, I guess. She had no idea about my situation, so she thought it was weird I kept asking if her dad was coming soon. After about 10 more minutes, (coughs) we're in the danger zone now, 
My body was telling me I had to shit or it was going to do it for me. So without hesitation, I just bolt across the road into a station as fast as I can without any explanation to the station bathroom. As I'm running, all of the shit, (laughs) all of the shit is just falling out and running down my legs like water running down a drain. Oh no, you did a, a sprint shit? Not a not a Usain poo. That's fucked. Um, as I'm running, all the shit is falling out and running down my legs like water running down a drain. Luckily enough, the bathroom was not locked or I would have been fucked. I quickly get on the toilet and realize my underwear is destroyed like I just dropped a bomb in my pants. As I'm trying to clean myself up, my ex is texting and calling me saying that her dad is here waiting for us (laughs) and getting annoyed why I'm taking so long. So I literally throw my underwear in the corner of the room and I leave it there. Oh, you fucking cunt. I didn't put it in the bin or anything. I just left them there. You dog. Some poor fucking cleaner has to come in and pick up those underwear because, yeah, and you know they wish they could just go, I'm pooping. Scoopers, but the, <laughs> but they can't because they're a fucking muggle toilet cleaner. I do my best to clean up and find there's no soap in the bathroom, so I'm like, fuck, I can't hide the smell at all. I leave the bathroom, underwear is still there in the corner of the room, go back to my ex who is now sitting in her dad's car waiting. <laughs> I get in the car reeking of shit and I have to sit there the whole time while he gives me strange looks like I'm some smelly diseased animal who's now going out with his daughter. My ex is trying to cover the smell by saying she farted. Oh, what? Dude, you gotta marry that girl. If you shit in your dad's car and she goes, sorry guys, I farted. Oh, looks like I farted again. Looks like I've been farting for the last 20 minutes. It's definitely not my boyfriend who just shit himself in the fucking car. That's me. My farts. Dude, you gotta marry her. What a fucking, what a legend. My ex is trying to cover the smell saying she farted, but a heart, a fart could not hide what I smelt like. At the end of it all, I just told him to drop me off at a random house saying, <laughs> a random spot saying that's where I live. It was a lie because it was an, act, an, act, an extra half an hour walk, but I was so ashamed of myself, I couldn't sit in the car any longer. <laughs> At least I got myself a girlfriend. Dude, you didn't get yourself a girlfriend that night. You got yourself a fucking wife. Bro, if, if that's how I started my relationship with my girl, she would have been gone fucking the next day. Hey, babe, I know how we had that cute little walk home where we became couples, but uh, seeing as you shit your pants in my dad's car, I'm going to have to rescind on that offer. You're not my girlfriend anymore. You're just a chick who shit herself and left shitty underwear in the public bathroom. Uh, Dude, marry her (laughs) because she's a fucking trooper just saying that she farted. Incredible, man. That's fucking hilarious. I'm <laughs> All right. I don't know I don't know if I should end the podcast there or do another one. I don't think it's going to get any better than that. I'll see if there's another one. <clears throat> um All right, we've got a revenge story. I called my ex on speaker while fucking my girlfriend. <laughs> Hey cunt, I know you love a good revenge story. A while ago, I was in a thing with this girl called Jessica. She would constantly text and call me when we were together and would not leave me alone. She would make me call her no matter where I was and would spam me with calls and texts if I didn't respond. So I cut her off and I blocked her on everything. Are you ghosted her? You're a fucking asshole. A few months later, I got together with another girl called Shannon. Um... Shannon was over at my place and no one was home. So we decided to do what any couple with a high sex drive would do. We decided to have sex. 
What a fucking weird sentence. While we were getting hot and heavy, I suggested to Shannon that we call Jessica on speakerphone while we're fucking. She laughed and agreed, so I dialed a number on no caller ID, then we start fucking. She answered hello, and all she could hear was two people fucking and laughing. She hung up, and I called another three times after that, and honestly, I didn't feel any remorse whatsoever because I'm a cunt. Um... Yeah, dude, that's not a revenge story. That's just you being a massive asshole to a girl who probably liked you a lot. Um, So (laughs) don't do that again because that's really mean. And that's the end of the podcast. Should have end. I should have ended it at the shitting yourself story. All right, guys, that's the end of the podcast. Remember, January tenth. That's when the popular vote category opens. That's when we're voting. I think you can vote once a day. I will confirm that. I'll post in the Facebook group. Speared Sunday's Facebook group is what it's called. Um, and uh, support me on Patreon if you want early access to everything that I do and would like to help support me and all that kind of shit and you want cheaper tickets to episode 150 of the podcast which will go on sale hopefully in the next couple of days. All right, that's the end. I will see you next Sunday. It'll be coming out on time whether or not the pot tickets are on sale or not. Um, and uh, popular vote, I'm winning that shit. All right, thanks for listening, guys. I will talk to you soon. I got a video coming up tonight, and it's a fucking banger. All right, that's the end. Poopus, scoopus, have a shit one.